On June 22nd, 2001, the United States government began Operation Dark Winter. Operation Dark Winter was not a war game. Instead, something more unusual. Dark Winter was a germ game. In 2001, the US military, government, and media launched a mock battle against pathology. The premise was simple. The bioterror organization released a deadly virus into the country, and smallpox is spreading quickly. The US government must now react to contain the outbreak and stop further harm. How did we do? The results were disastrous. Within 48 hours, the government failed its objectives. The loss of human life was high, and when Operation Dark Winter ended three days later, a summary of recommendations were given to implement across different levels of government to better prepare in case of a future Dark Winter. But a Dark Winter never came. Instead, four months later, 9-11 struck the United States with a different type of fear, and the government and our focus shifted away from home to land conflicts in Iraq and Islamic terrorism abroad. But Dark Winter wasn't the last germ game. There was a second, and that's what I want to discuss with you here today. In Baltimore, Maryland, in a house five blocks south of the capital, in 2018, Operation Clad X began. The scenario was similar to Dark Winter. This time, an influenza outbreak has occurred in Venezuela. It is likely to reach the US in a few days. The government must react. The simulation ran for five days. Day one began with preliminary reports and the government grappling to respond to uncertain information. Day three, the sickness was confirmed in the United States. Day five, the simulation ended. The process is fascinating, and there's a lot to dig into. But one interesting note is that Cladex was documented. There are recordings throughout the entire germ game, and I recommend you all dig through their archives to learn more. But now I want to play you a portion from that last day of the Cladex simulation. It's slow, but I ask you to pay close attention to what they're saying. It's important. We are now three months since the last meeting, and the pandemic has rapidly worsened globally and in the United States. The number of cases and deaths are increasing exponentially. Remember, this is a simulation. Here is the current U.S. situation. Approximately 60 cases three months ago at the last meeting to nearly 60,000 cases now. Global markets have plummeted from its high five months ago, and the Fed is now projecting a deep economic recession. Many domestic hospitals are failing due to lack of staff and supplies. Telework and social distancing measures are being encouraged by the CDC. Schools across the country are closed, and many public gatherings have been canceled. Public demand for surgical masks and respirators far exceed the available supply. National Guard units in multiple states have been deployed to provide security for pharmacies and hospitals. Here is the global situation as best we can determine it. As you can see, Claydex is basically everywhere. In 2017, Bill Gates gave a TED Talk titled, The Next Pandemic, We're Not Ready. In his brief 20 minutes, he highlighted the U.S. government spends billions of dollars to keep an active, scalable military ready for any conflict. This is a pragmatic response to a hostile world, and multiple measures are taken. Equipment is kept updated, reserves are paid, logistical operations are practiced every day. But our global health response is weak. We've atrophied. We have little medical reserves, no active plans, and as certainly as war is a fact of human life, equally it's disease. Just because we don't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Now, part of the reason for this is that we have invested a huge amount in nuclear deterrence. But we've actually invested very little in a system to stop an epidemic. We're not ready. Operation Cladex revealed in clear terms the extent to which Bill Gates was right. Our government is unprepared for pandemics. In the simulation, hospitals were overwhelmed, quarantine proved futile, and we ran out of ventilators. The outcomes from a global pandemic were knowable in January of 2020. Our weak points have been discovered from Operation Clad X and Dark Winter, but we did nothing in the intervening years to fix them. Ever you think we need to do to avoid this downside, you have to consider doing it because this is existential. I mean, America's just wiped out in the last six hours, basically. If you're losing 60% of the GDP, on December 20th, 2019, a year after Clad X, China began to report a new form of coronavirus in the Huaibei province. Transmission rate and mortality were unknown. 
However, in the following weeks, it would be called COVID-19. dubbed it COVID-19. spread across the world. Tens of thousands of people would get critically sick in my city. This is a recording of the New York governor three months later, March 19th, 2020. There is a federal stockpile of medical equipment. That stockpile has about 12,000 ventilators for the nation. Again, we need 30,000. Federal government has 12. I mean, this is a bad situation. When the CDC starts putting out guidance, you can use a scarf as a mask. You know, uh, it's time to make more masks. But why does this all matter? What's this all about? Well, here's where I want to speculate. I live in New York City. COVID-19 cases are exponentially climbing as I record this. New data from China now indicates that coronavirus is infecting people with the blood type A at a much higher rate. We don't know why, but I am A positive. I will likely get sick in a matter of weeks. Survival is probable, but not guaranteed. The effects this virus is having on our society's operating system are catastrophic. Markets have tanked, supply chains have frozen, borders are closed, states on lockdown. When I scrape Cladex as a model projection for COVID-19, the prediction is the United States will eventually bounce back, but not without passing considerable hardship and a death count we are culturally unused to, to say the least. As I sit here with grocery stores low on food and the city on lockdown, I stress we must look toward the future and prepare for pandemics on the horizon. They are not a question of if, but when. We in the future should keep medical personnel on reserve the same way we do with the military. We must move to reclaim manufacturing of essential drugs from abroad. The Import-Export Bank of the United States functions to provide monetary relief toward industries considered vital to the United States' defense, like Boeing airplanes. The same measures must be taken towards medicine. We must stockpile ventilators and medical equipment as if we were continually under siege. This is a text conversation I had with a doctor on March 12th, when only seven known cases of COVID-19 existed in New York. There are now over 25,000 confirmed cases. Chloroquine is flooding in, but it isn't enough. Doctors are using one ventilator to keep multiple people alive. We're going so far as to trying an experimental procedure where we s split the ventilator. We use one ventilator for two patients. These precautions are no longer optional. They must be done to guarantee the survival of the human race. The Wuhan coronavirus of 2020, simply known as COVID-19, has a death rate of 3% and is transmissible through aerosol. A mutation with a higher mortality could make our civilization extinct in a matter of months. It would be a system collapse not seen since the Bronze Age, 4,000 years ago. We need, at a minimum, an additional 30,000 ventilators. FEMA is sending us 400 ventilators. Where are they? Where are the ventilators? Where are the gowns? Where's the PPEs? Where are the masks? Where are they? FEMA says we're sending 400 ventilators. Really? What am I going to, what am I going to do with 400 ventilators when I need 30,000? You pick the 26,000 people who are going to die because you only sent 400 ventilators. We knew there would be points of failure in a pandemic. We knew we were inadequately prepared, but we did not act. We will not get as lucky a second time. If we continue to hold Bronze Age ideas, we will end up like the Bronze Age, gone, with man 4,000 years from now curiously wondering what went wrong. This is what went wrong. The increase in the number of cases continues uh, unabated. As a matter of fact, the rate of increase has gone up. That means the number of hospital beds a dark winter arrived. Coronavirus is now everywhere. Now for the height of the curve is 140,000 hospital beds. Uh, I will turn this state upside down to get the number of beds we need.
you're missing the magnitude of the problem.